The TA-154A1 is a twin-engine German premium fighter in War Thunder. Is it worth the GEs? Let's find out. The Fokkewolf TA-154, designed by the famous engineer Kurt Tank, was a design that showed amazing promise, but was almost doomed from the start. The aircraft was originally envisioned as a twin-engined fast attack bomber, as a kind of analog to the de Havilland Mosquito, and it followed a pretty similar design paradigm. The plane was to be light, mostly made out of wood, with powerful engines and clean aerodynamics. The development program got caught up in all kinds of political infighting and maneuvering, with bureaucratic competition between the TA-154 and the aircraft that eventually became the Heinkel 219. Really, the story of all that could be a mini-series docudrama, and it's far too involved to get into all of it here. Anyway, during the development program, requirements changed a bit due to the highly successful Allied bombing campaign that was going on, and the plane was repurposed as a bomber interceptor with potential as a night fighter. The early prototypes had excellent performance, but unfortunately, as military equipment was added, such as cannons and radar, the performance started to drop off a bit. To make matters worse for the 154, the Allies bombed the only factory making the critical Tigo film resin that was used in its construction, which caused serious problems as the replacement glue ended up being corrosive. Whoops. In any case, the early A0 pre-production models were fitted out with different combinations of radar sets, and one was even tested with different engines before the standard for the A1 production model was finalized. Primary sources give conflicting info about whether or not the A1 production model retained the Fug 212 Lichtenstein radar set that the prototypes had, carried the more modern Fug 218 Neptune radar, or had the radar removed to save weight. Regardless, we don't get the radar set in War Thunder. Only about 50 combat-capable examples were built and saw very little service before the war ended. What we get in War Thunder is the TA-154A1, a premium interceptor in rank 3 of the German air tree at battle rating 4.3. The plane doesn't get the radar set that the prototypes had, although I really wish it did, but it does have a set of four cannons which give it an insane amount of forward firepower right on the center line. It gets two 30mm MK-108 cannons and two more 20mm MG-151 cannons, which combine for a total burst mass of just over 9 kilograms at battle rating 4.3. You get ammo belt selections to fit any playstyle, but really, the air targets belt and the night belt are probably the best on paper, as they're full of Minengeschoss rounds that do absolutely enormous damage in the prop tiers. But really, all of the ammo belts are totally viable, though, and you should just experiment a bit to figure out which one you prefer. Now, as mentioned in the intro, the plane was shifted during development from being a high-speed bomber into being a night fighter, so it doesn't get any bombs or anything. Just the four cannons. The flight performance of this plane is similar to a lot of other two-engine prop interceptors. Its maneuverability isn't great in most situations, and in a traditional turning dogfight, it's going to get smacked around pretty bad by most single-engine fighters. Still, it can outturn a lot of twin engine props, and it can sometimes get a good energy turn inside of a single engine prop, but usually not more than one. It rolls well in most situations, and generally speaking, all of its performance is tuned towards higher speeds. Anything you can do to keep your speed up is probably a good play, as the plane really turns best above 400 kilometers an hour and it gets really sluggish below about 300. The rate of climb is okay, better than a lot of other planes at this BR, 
but there are still some single-engine runway fighters that can beat you to altitude, which can be more than a little frustrating considering that the plane gets an air spawn in realistic battles. Now, its top end speed and level flight is really good, and it maxes out at over 650 kilometers an hour, depending on altitude and other factors. But its acceleration seems to be sort of best in the mid end of the power curve, so it might take you a while to actually get up to those speeds. Now, the plane historically has had a reputation in War Thunder for wing rips. But flying it at the start of 2023, I didn't really have any structural failures. Similarly, this wooden plane can actually absorb a pretty decent amount of damage before going down. And in fact, you can fly this thing back to the airfield on one engine. Given you'll be flying crooked, slow, and risk spinning out, but it's savable if you lose an engine. Speaking of which, you need to watch your engine temperatures. Even on automatic engine controls, you can use WEP for a bit, but they will start to overheat, so pay attention to it and always remember, boil the oil is not a good tactic. The plane can deploy combat flaps up to around 450 kilometers an hour, and it doesn't have an air brake. Taking the TA-154 into arcade battles is good clean fun for the whole family. The usual arcade battles flight model buff really helps this thing hold its own. And with careful flying, you can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with planes that are a lot more agile than this thing is, at least on paper. The 8-kill arcade sortie I showed at the start of this review was actually pretty typical. I wasn't showing off. The absurd firepower this thing has, combined with how much damage it can take, can rack up some really impressive kill counts in arcade even without a lot of practice. Now in arcade battles, it's an entirely different story. I'm only showing a little bit of it in this review because it's not really interesting to watch, but the most effective play style is to fly up as a high altitude vulture, setting up very careful positioning with like little cat and mouse games with other people at high altitude, and using boom and zoom tactics to try and make high energy attacks without getting sucked into turning dogfights. It's a slow paced style of gameplay in a game mode that's already slow paced in mid tier props, but it's honestly your best bet. Again, the majority of single engine planes will dance all over this thing in close combat, and after only one or two turns, you're gonna be flying slow enough that your controls start to choke up and there really isn't much you can do about it. Altitude and speed are this plane's friends, and really, when you engage a target, if you don't think you can maintain an energy advantage, consider just trying to run away. Now, in terms of ground attack, you don't have any external ordnance, so you're relying on the cannons. You can pop AI ground targets up to about medium tanks, but in close air support for ground RB, you might have to pick your targets a little more carefully to actually get kills. Still, worst case, you can do a lot of superficial damage and force repairs and scout for your team. Not the best at close air support, but not a total chump either. Visually, I'm almost always a fan of twin engine prop fighters, and the TA-154 is one of the best looking ones we get in War Thunder. It's got a slick, high-speed shape and a compact design that looks deceptively modern. There are three skins for it in the game, and my personal favorite is the black one. The default paint job isn't bad, and there's an unpainted prototype skin if that's more your thing. Landing the plane is really easy. It gets a tricycle landing gear, so there's almost no risk of nosing over on landing, and if your engines aren't damaged, managing the airspeed on final is pretty simple. You can safely drop gear at around 350 kilometers an hour, and you can drop landing flaps around 325. The cockpit on this plane is a placeholder. The visibility to the sides is blocked by the engines, but otherwise it's not too bad with a good forward view and looking back over your shoulder is actually better than in a lot of other planes that don't have bubble canopies. Overall, average cockpit for a low-poly placeholder.
closing out on the TA-154A1. This plane has an enormous amount of forward firepower, with four powerful cannons mounted close to the center line. It can take Minengeschoss ammo for all of its guns. It gets the interceptor spawn in realistic battles. It has good top end speed. It can survive significant amounts of battle damage, and it gets premium bonuses. However, it isn't a great turn fighter. It's easy to overheat the engines and it can still be outclimbed by a fair number of single-engine fighters. The final verdict on the TA-154 is that the plane is a lot of fun to fly, but if you want to be effective, you're going to be limited to a very narrow, very slow-paced playstyle that a lot of players aren't going to have the patience for. And even then, it can be hard-countered by around half a dozen other planes who can outclimb it and outturn it at altitude. As always, thanks for watching.